You okay? Did you get attacked? No, well, I was you playing have a with Maddie, on it? and I kicked her toy, and her mouth was open, so her teeth went into my foot. You'll find you never have to look too far. You don't have to cover up your scars. You're perfect, darling, just the way you are. So before you think to rip yourself apart, open up my heart and you'll find love, love, love. Hi, Keep It Crazy family. <laughs> so it is a new day. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not quite awake yet. I'm still getting there. Still getting there. I'm very but much trying to wake up here. For but, those of you yeah. who are new to our channel, um, our daughter Melinda is getting married very soon. They actually had to end up pushing their wedding a little bit. Um, and come to find out the ballroom that was rented for their wedding had some storm damage there was a really bad storm here and it kind of ruined some things um so they had to push all the weddings back it was just crazy so they're thinking they may want to pick a new venue at this point but they're still trying to figure it out so we're gonna go look at a couple places this morning um and hopefully they find the perfect one i'm super excited let's go We just pulled in and the front entrance is so beautiful. I can't wait to go inside and see it. It's so beautiful. It looks like a princess castle. Question for you, Isaac. Yeah. Could you see yourself getting married here? Yeah. Yeah? It's so beautiful. Look at this altar. We just got done with the first venue and it was so cute. I really so liked it. It was a really nice place. And we are headed over to the second one right now. Let's go check it out. Either one, I think, could be amazing, and once they put their own touches on it, so. Yeah, we'll let you know once Melinda and Isaac um, decide on a venue, but we're really excited for them. We are really excited for them. While we were at the venue, what happened? Maddie, well, Lucas was playing with Maddie. Apparently, Lucas grabbed Maddie's toy and started running, and Maddie chased him and tried to get the toy and accidentally bit his foot, so. Okay, let's go. Let's go look. Let's at go it. make sure he's okay. <laughs> Lucas. He wanted a green bag. So you okay? Did you get attacked? No. Well, I was you playing have a with Maddie, and I kicked her toy, and her mouth was open, so her teeth went into my foot. Uh, oh. So it was an sense. accident. It was just an, an accident. accident. Are you okay though? Yeah, I'm fine. Did you cry? Did you put nail on it? No, you put the bandaid on it. Okay, let's see it. Doesn't need stitches or anything crazy, right? I can't even get the bandaid off. Is Ow. it bad? It's pretty bad. Ow. It's a deep hole without blood in it. It's deeper. Ow. I think it's okay though. I don't think it needs stitches. I think it's fine. Wedding venue shopping is always really fun. Um, now that we're kind of done with that though, we thought we would just take a few minutes and give you guys an update because I know a lot of you were expecting a wedding video <laughs> <laughs> this week, but that obviously didn't happen. So after talking with Melinda and Isaac, they wanted to slow things down a little bit and really plan out the wedding perfectly, make sure that all the details are there. Melinda really wants it to be her dream wedding. So they've decided to push off the wedding until the beginning of 2022. So either January, February, um, there will be a wedding, it's just not yet. So that's why it got pushed off, but I think it's good. I think it's good to wait, get to know each other more, just kind of go through you know, the next few months to make sure all the details are perfect and it's gonna be so special once it does come around. So, okay, and then you guys had a few questions. If you guys hear bouncing in the background, the kids are playing basketball up there. 
so it might be a little wild but <laughs> okay so the other thing i've been seeing come across the channel a lot for those of you who are new to our channel are like why are their kids faces blurred there's obviously three kids and their faces are blurred and that is because they are foster children um, that we are adopting and so we have to keep their faces blurred until they're officially adopted which should should be sometime in december ish and everybody asked so. well, why were you able to show lucas lucas and savannah we actually had permission to do that so yeah we actually got permission from their lawyer to do that so in some situations every foster care situation is different the general rule is they cannot be shown on so, um, social media but there are some situations where they can be and if there's um you send a thing to the judge if the lawyer does and a judge signs a media release form then they can be um on social media that's why you see some kids on like you know Fred wednesday's child or different things on the news those those situations um judges do sign off on to allow that so now we're gonna answer just a couple of the questions that you guys have had um, from a previous post that you guys posted on. This from Christy reads, if I remember right, you had posted that you all are adopting a newborn. Are you still doing that? I don't remember seeing an update. Um, no, we are not. We actually we posted an update video on that a couple days after we went um, to visit Tennessee. Yeah. But, um, yeah, we just... We ended up not feeling right about the situation, and I can't say the entire story, but basically we were misled in the situation. Margarita Coloma, what has been the most challenging thing you've had to deal with? That's a hard one. Mm -hmm. There's so much. There's so <laughs> many challenges in life just in general. I would say like a going through a miscarriage has been, was one of my super difficult situations that we had to go through. Um, I agree with that one actually. That was really tough. That was really tough. Yeah. So anybody who's gone through a miscarriage or currently our hearts go out to you on that situation. There are a lot of other challenges that we've had to overcome, but. The loss of some of our, well, we were hoping to adopt some of the previous foster kids that we had and it didn't end up working out and that was really difficult too. Mm -hmm. Judy Anderson, I, I only have one question as you are open and honest. You share your lives with all of us. What decisions were made to start sharing your lives and the children's lives on social media? So I actually uh, gave a talk on this. I actually, today. yeah, I actually <laughs> talked about this today. Um, okay, so Going back to the beginning, when kids were first coming into our house, um, you know, they came with nothing. A lot of them didn't have baby pictures. A lot of them didn't have really anything. We still don't. With them. Like with Alex, we don't know who his biological parents are. We don't and even know. Yeah. We don't know where they're at. We can't contact them. We can't get photos. He, he doesn't have any pictures prior to the age of 12. Like before that. Well, I think he has one when he was nine. But prior to that, there was no pictures. So Hannah had actually gotten a school project um, shortly after coming into our home. She was nine years old when she came to us. And in the project, they was like, okay, make a timeline of your life. And in the beginning, it was like, put a baby picture, put your childhood memories, how, you know, did your parents choose your name? All of these different things. What the teacher didn't realize is that was a very devastating project to give to a child in her situation so she avoided the project altogether she cried she had a really hard time with the whole thing and so i sat down with her and i'm like okay let's take this one step at a time and we actually put her picture into like a time simulator, simulator. yeah and it produced what they what you know it thought that she looked like as a baby so we put that in her timeline um we looked up the meaning of her name and how special it was and how beautiful of a name and we put all that information and we slowly built this timeline up um and it was a really good bonding experience for her and I to go through together. So it was an amazing, amazing project. It ended up being, it wasn't in the beginning, but in that moment, I decided like, I want to start taking a million pictures and videos. I want to start sharing their lives and how special and how important they are on an individual level. And also as our family goes through things. 
Um, I One of my most prized possessions is my dad's journal. My dad passed away from colon cancer when I was just two years old. And when I was 18, well, kind of go back to like, oh, so everyone who knew my biological dad were like, oh my gosh, he's the most amazing person. He was incredible, but we're not gonna talk about him because they felt it was too painful and too fresh growing up of him passing away that anybody that I talked to had a really hard time of talking about it. So when I was 18, my mom gave me his journal and how special and amazing that was. And I was so excited to read, read from his words, his life. And he talked about how he owned a rock shop and how he met my mom and when he learned of his cancer and how he felt about it. And, and it's just this really amazing journal. It was only 13 pages long, but it is still to this day one of my most prized possessions. And so to have that, I really wanted for my kids to have that and to share our lives and for the, the kids to have their stories. And even looking back a year ago at videos and having that record is incredible. All of our kids go back and watch old videos and old things that I really hope like our great grandchildren or great great grandchildren can find love and inspiration in our stories. And so that is kind of ones that led us. I mean, there was obviously a lot of other things that led us to, you know, YouTube and blogging and this whole life, but that's kind of where it all began. So Lindsay Gray, how many kids have you fostered in total, including the ones that have been unable to adopt? 38? It's somewhere between 38 and 45. Well, I guess we, if you count our... We sat down and we tried to count 41. it at one point. It's it's a lot. I would say 41 with our three new kids. So 41 in yeah. total. Yeah. It's a lot. It's a lot. Michaela Smith, how did you get started in fostering? My fiance and I were thinking about doing it in the future. Definitely would love to give a child an opportunity at life they will appreciate for a lifetime. So Michaela, how we got started, I've actually always wanted to, I've told the story before, but I've always wanted to do foster care. I had a best friend in high school and Shelly and I were actually sitting in a room with him and it was right around Christmas time. And we were both like, I want this for Christmas. I want this shirt and this blah, blah, blah. We're just saying what we want for Christmas. And we look over at him and we were like, what do you want for Christmas? And he's like, nothing he's like i already have it he's like i just wanted a family for christmas and come to find out he was a foster child and he was getting adopted by a family and shelly and i both looked at each other in that moment and you could tell both of us were like oh my gosh like i can't believe that we're sitting here like we want this and it's such material things at the end of the day families what matter and being close to your family during holidays and that's one thing that i'm really looking forward to this christmas is it's going to be our first christmas with our three new kids and to be have them in our family and experience that and to have that around us it's just an incredible, it's, it's my favorite time of the year. It was so special with Savannah and Lucas last year too, so. And what led us to becoming foster care and adoption parents is, so we had trouble getting pregnant with our third biological child. Uh, we ended up uh, being on fertility treatments. We tried for almost, what, a year and a half, two years? It was a while. And we finally got pregnant. Um, but then sadly it ended in a miscarriage. And we were going through a really rough time and I had the idea of let's foster and adopt. Let's, if we're not going to be able to have, because at that point we thought, oh, well, what if we can never have our own biological children ever again? We want to still grow our family. And so I thought that was the perfect way to do it. And so I went to Crystal and I was like, hey, what if we try foster care and adoption? And so we signed up for the classes because she loved the idea too. She hadn't been thinking about it for a long time. And uh, yeah, so we started them, or like a week before we started the classes, we found out we were pregnant again. And we were pregnant with Logan. Yeah. So we decided though that that was still the path that we were meant to be on, so. Yeah. Teresha Doblash, LOL, do you have a housekeeper or someone who takes care of the lawn and pool? If so, nothing wrong with that. You have so much on your hands. Wonderful family, you are all so blessed. Thank you, Teresa. So. Um, okay, so we do have someone, we do have a landscaper. We have a landscaper. Now, nicely, our yard is... It's really low maintenance because it's all fake grass and pavers. So it's like there's just a few bushes to trim and that's it. 
Um, and as you guys know, our previous house, we struggled with the yard. We just, they're not good at yard work. We've always, we looked and looked for a landscaper up there, but in a small town, it was kind of harder to find. Um, and then we do have someone who takes care of the pool for us. So we do have a pool and landscaper. We do not have a housekeeper. Um, our kids, I mean, we all do chores. I need to do a chore video to show you how, how that all works, but yeah. And I, that's pretty much all we have. I mean, we have like an editor and we also have um, Robert, who's our videographer, so. Sarah Gibson, in the past, have you consulted with your current children before making the decision to foster or adopt more kids as it affects the whole family? Absolutely. I don't, I don't know if we've answered this one before, but yes, like definitely. We don't adopt without everybody being on board because as you said, it's a family affair. It's, it affects everybody. So, and if there's one that didn't want to, then we wouldn't as a family because we feel like everybody's um, everybody's opinion. opinion and choice matters in the situation. So all of our kids met the three kids before they came in. We had a family vote. Like it was an actual family decision and every single kid was on board with this. So. Shani tore me. Are there any children that have special needs? If so, do you get, do they get more leeway with certain things, possibly sensor issues that cause bad behavior? If so, how do you deal with it? That's a great question. That's a really good question. So yes, we do have um, <laughs> kids with different things going on. Aurora has some sensory things going on. Um, some of the kids have triggers and different things with that. So I wouldn't call it necessarily like leeway with bad behaviors, but there are, there's usually some kind of emotion attached to that behavior and we try to figure out that, like what's going on and how we can help the child the best way that we possibly can. Um, so yes, we do parent our kids differently depending on their situation and individual needs, so. For instance, putting stuff in your mouth. Aurora puts a lot of things in her mouth. Where's your necklace? Where's your necklace? She has sensory necklaces. Right now it's a little hair, but brush. Where's your necklace? All right, we are going to end it here, but thank you guys so much for watching and we will see you guys next time. Bye. Bye.